Hi guys, Brain the Scary Lion, back with Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, this is part three. Uh, so far where we're up to, um, I'm wondering if Monica is self-aware. Like there were little hints in the last one to kind of show that we, she was being self-aware. Kind of creeped me out a bit, but if she's not the one who's going a bit weird, then I'm guessing it's probably going to be uh, Sayori? No, it's not Sayori, it's Yori. Yori, that's the one. Sorry, I haven't played in like two weeks. Yeah, uh, Yori's poems seem a bit... Eh? So it's one of them, it's one of those two. That's what I'm boiling it all down to. It's one of those two. It could be all of them, like honestly, it could be all of them that mess up. But yeah, uh, got, oh, didn't mean to do that. Got this open again, just in case, because apparently something might pop up. But yeah, uh, let's just get into the game. So we're back in, and this is where we left off. We need to pick these. Um, yeah, and if you remember right, uh, one of the things I picked up on is Monica is not in this part, and she's still not here. Like, am I not allowed to pick Monica? Is is that a part of it? Like, I'm not allowed to pick Monica? Okay, let, 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 let's just keep going. Um, who were we steering towards? We were steering towards Netsuki, weren't we? So hers were the sweet ones. Uh, so Charm. Oh, no, that's Sayori. Uh, special. Nope, that's Sayori again. Bliss. Nope. Emotions of Sayori, right. Uh, shiny, I'm guessing that's going to be Sayori. Heartbeat, Yori, I think. Strawberry, sweet. Right. Uh, peaceful, that's going to be Sayori. We'll go with Color. Nope, that's Sayori. Uh, lollipop. Um, hurt, hurt. Really? Uh, twirl, peace, laugh. Twirl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, marshmallow. Vibrant. No, lucky. Fun. Desire. Ribbon. Ribbon should be Sayori. That's uh, Sayori Natsuki. I'm getting all muddled up. Uh, waterfall. Oh no, anime. Anime is her thing, isn't it? Uh, mouse. Chocolate. We're doing well. Uh, death, flee, no, awesome, awesome, no, dance, no, that goes to see already, uh, bubbles, I'm guessing that's, oh, candy, candy, there we go, uh, vivacious, flower, flower, no, that's Sayori, kiss, tears, electricity, puppy, kiss, yeah, kiss, the sweet things, passion, no. Vanilla. Uh, sticky kitty. We've got one left to pick. Uh, suicide. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you can tell it's not going to be a good game if suicide is one of the ones that you can pick. Uh, sugar or sweet? Let's go sugar. Right. I think we're going to get back on track. Right, give me a minute. I need to remember the accents that I gave them. Oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry. Uh, no, this is me. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Uh, were you practicing the piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. So, we're already we're starting off with the two weird ones well it's not like I'm calling it see I'm going into judging yeah no that's not what I'm doing remember that the club won't be remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you and I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too ah love it I've got all of the accents wrote down just so I didn't forget ah I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Netsuki? 
Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. So yeah, she, she, she likes food. So that's the whole part of, yeah, getting the food answers when it came to picking for her. You sound a bit like Siori all of a sudden. Yeah, because Siori's also a greedy bitch. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty spe specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people? Eh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean, you of all people? Yeah, the accents haven't improved. Not gonna lie to you, the accents are still terrible, but let's just keep going with them. Because it's there right it's right there in your name. Oh no, it's right in your name. Mon Ika. I don't get that. Am I supposed to? Mon Ika? No, I don't get it, sorry. Eh, that's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. What? Oh, is this a little thing? Is this a little thing like it's supposed to make sense in uh, like Chinese or Japanese, wherever this game was made? Sorry, I'm not disrespectful here. I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, but like, I don't know where this game was made. But Lost, it makes no sense in translation. Is that her being self-aware again? I don't like it. Don't be self-aware. Uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as funny as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where, Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh. You're spacing out again. Ah. Uh -huh. Eh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Of course! Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows, a, shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. So Siori's starting to become a bit distant. Maybe I should have picked her when it came to all the, like, decisions. Maybe. I don't know. Alright, if you say so. I, I worriedly glance at Siori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Siori recently. Since they have been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Bran, what's up? <laughs> wow, that's so <awfully> weird. <laughs> Bran! Uh, hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Siori lately? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading a little too much into it, but she seemed a bit downcast yesterday. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed... I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Siori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised you... But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Brian. What? You certainly know a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, 
She was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, uh, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Uh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe, maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Brian. Me? Uh, it sounds weird every time I say Brian in that accent. How on earth do you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Siori talks about you more than anyone else, you know. Uh, she's been so much happier since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside her. Yeah, I got that right. <laughs> what? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Brian. I didn't say how funny. I just said that she hasn't been different. I didn't say anything funny. Oh, I hate when people do that. Oh, you, you're well funny. You, what? I didn't actually say how funny. Calm yourself. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you. Oh, well, I see she's got a crush on me. Yeah, I kind of figured that one out early on. Uh, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I do it? What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think too much about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. Yeah, back away, bitch. You're off. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. Well, I shouldn't be trying to snoop anyway, should I, to be fair? I sigh and sit down myself. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but it's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh down on me so much? Well, you care about your best friend, don't you? Like, when your best friend's down, you you always want to do anything that you can to help, even if they go, oh, well, there's no you can do, or I don't want you to do anything. You always try your best. Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary, but there is nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Hey you. Eh? I look up to see Natsuki sat next to me. Are you just going to sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't that much time so... Ah, uh, sorry. I didn't mean to make you worry or anything. Uh, it's not like I'm worried. I was just... Natsuki glances down at her side. She's holding a volume of manga in her hand. That's right. Something just came up for a minute. But we can get started now. Oh yeah, I was reading manga with her, weren't I? Uh, it won't make... I won't make you wait any longer. Jesus. Jeez. Now you're making me feel like a jock. If something's bothering you, then you can just tell me to leave you alone and I will. I mean, assuming you didn't feel like talking about it or anything. She practically mumbles that last part. Nah, I'm probably making it seem like a bigger deal than it is. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. Sayori? Thinking about her? Yeah, she seems pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me. <coughs> so I can't help but wonder if something's happened to her. Oh, Natsuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway... You're her best friend, right? Uh, I guess so. This is what I was saying. Best friends. That's why. Yeah. 
Then in that case, I think you should trust her a little more. What? If she needed you, then you would be the first person she would go to, right? Not always. Sometimes you don't want to talk to anyone if you're feeling like crap. I know that first hand. Well, I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. Uh, you can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, that's kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly. If she needs you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. Yeah. I, I should have thought of it that way from the start. Natsuki fiddles with the book she's holding in her hands. She... She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. It's normal to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so... I was not. Jeez, if you're fine, then let's hurry and get started. Yeah, yeah. I pulled the first volume of Parfop Girls out of my back out of my bag. I might be saying that wrong, parfait, parfait, not, not sure. Natsuki takes it from my hands, then quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. I'm not that careless, I am. I handle manga all the time, you know, the only thing I'm not, the only thing that I'm like not careless with really is my comic books. I, 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 I like to keep them in good order. I just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm going to get the next one, okay? Natsuki makes her way to the closet, and I follow. So you're going to tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this volume leave you off again, I forget? Uh, the chapter ended when Minori and Alice found... Monica? Natsuki's voice resonates out from inside the closet. Eh? I peer inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you move my manga again? Uh, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in her closet. So I had to move some stuff around and clean it up a little. It's all there, I just had to organise it a bit. Ugh. The top shelf is far above Natsuki's head. She makes a futile hop to try to... I like that, she just hopped in the background. Brilliant. Jeez. This is so inconvenient. I'm moving all of these back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. And besides, they're, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? Uh, Natsuki? There's a stool on the wall there. The closet... In the closet, there's a collapsible stool hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. I can get them myself. Natsuki grabs the stool from the wall and unfolds it. You think I'm short or something? I mean... I knew it. Well, you know what? Just watch me. Natsuki hops onto the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of its collapsible design. Ah, careful. I know what I'm doing. Standing on the stool, Natsuki's finger fingertips reach the top of the shelf. The stool would be enough for me to easily grab the books, but Natsuki is being stubborn as usual. Ah, uh, Natsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? Kia! She pulls, uh, the box suddenly tips. Jesus Christ, what am I on? Natsuki barely catches it before it falls on the floor. The stool wobbles. Ah, ah. Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She holds the box triumphantly. There. Having almost fell, Natsuki is a bit shaken up. Jeez, no need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... I said I can do it! 
I don't want your help, okay? <sighs> I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Natsuki forces a way past me and out of the closet. Let's see. The classroom chairs have the desks attached, <laughs> so they're too inconvenient to fit in the closet. Aha! Natsuki trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. She rolls it on its wheels back over to the closet. Ah, it's a little dangerous since the chair's on swivels and rolls. But I've already learned my lesson, so I keep my mouth shut. Ish. Natsuki climbs onto the chair and slowly balances onto her feet. Since she refuses to take my help, I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway and simply watch. So yeah, she, she's... what's the word? It's self summer. I'm not sure what the word is, but yeah, she just wants to do everything herself. Fair enough, she's independent. But very stubborn as well. Oh. That's got a bit iffy. Ah, there we go. See, I can do it now. Uh, Natsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down to put it on the shelf below. Whoa! The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting down and doing nothing? Who was it who told me not to help? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. I can... I can almost see up her skirt. Oh, this is taking a turn. This is taking a bit of a weird turn. Yeah. I'm not sure about this. Yeah. I force myself to turn away. Yeah, turn away. Turn away. You don't want to be... You just don't want to be doing it. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through. Once she realises, I'll be dead. Huh. Natsuki wraps her arms around the Parfait Girls box set. Easily the largest one on the top shelf. Uh, heavy. Uh, she's meant to be Scottish. Fucking hell, Brian. Hey, Brian. I don't think I can bend down without this one falling. Hurry and take this one. Uh, but then I have to let go of the chair. That's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. Alright. Let me just stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. What? What do you mean, stand up? Natsuki looks down at me. What are you doing all the way back? Eh. Uh, Natsuki just realised something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. <laughs> Natsuki, the box. What are you looking at? You're trying to look at, at my... At my... Oh. Do we have to go down this road? Natsuki's legs shake. I'm not. I, I, I was just. Natsuki, don't try move. Don't try to move. Give me the box. Y you pelv. You set me up. Go away. Get out. But I'll do it myself. Ah. The chair suddenly swivels be beneath Natsuki's feet. Natsuki. Yeah. The scene turns into a chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the books go flying. I got you. She just crashed into me. Lovely. Please don't let it continue into this weird, like, sexual thing. Can we just move past the sexualness? <laughs> The full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the floor. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Um, one second. Sorry about that, I had something in my throat. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as as her face lands straight onto my chest. Ugh. My right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. Uh Slowly, Natsuki comes to her senses. I'm not even pronouncing that. GHK, there you go. <laughs> she presses her arms straight into me and props herself up. Eh, 
Natsuki seems to realize that it's not the floor that's beneath her. Grr! Gross, gross! Gika! Gak! Oh, whatever that is. A fist pounds into my chest. Oh, now she's twatting me. Lovely. Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking? You sicko! Everything okay over here? I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly peers in. Monica! See what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Jeez! S sorry, sorry. Oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club member is a total perv. Lovely, I'm a pervert now. I'm pretty sure this was all accidental. So I hope you're happy. I didn't... Somehow it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, I know, don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no! My... my... Eh? I look down. Natsuki's kneeling on the floor holding one of her books that are scattered all over. Oh, all of the books are scattered and she's holding one further. Uh, there's a large diagonal crease along the page that she desperately tries smoothing out. Oh, one of her books got fucking crease. That's, that is horrible. It's absolutely horrible because you try forever to get that crease out and I've still not found a way to get the creases out of your books. It's a bastard. Uh, it, it must have landed on the page. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the great crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut, then throws it on the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. Oh, she's crying. Natsuki, are you... I love the way the music's changed. It's like all somber and everything. No. Natsuki's voice squeaks. Oh, no! <laughs> I see tears on her face. Oh, poor Natsuki. Uh, I'll help get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so... Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No, I don't even care that much. I'm just having a really bad day today. Oh, why? What's up? I'm talking to a computer. I'm to I'm actually like I, I actually put my shit out there. Lovely. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It's it's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just every day is so hard. I just want to come to the club and Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I can... I can't press her, so I can only do what I know how to do. Alright. Well, I'll help clean this up. And I'll move the rest of the manga for you. Uh, I picked up volume 2 of Parfait Girls, or Parfait, or whatever it is. We'll set this one aside. This'll help you cheer up a bit, right? We can get started on this once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're... You're really nice to me. Eh? It sounds really strange coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well, I'm just treating you like a friend, you know. And Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I could do. The next couple of minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. I make sure to slip them into the boxes in their correct order. Yeah, put them in the correct order. That'll, that'll cheer her up. At least you're trying to take care of them like she wants. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done and I hoist the box onto the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it. Then I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of the books from the top shelf. Alright, that should do it. I hop off the stool. Natsuki averses her averts her gaze. 
Thanks. Ah, uh, it's nothing. Natsuki is holding the volume I set aside in her hands. Alright, I'm ready. Good. Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. The thing about cheering me up. If you insist. We sit in the same spot as last time and I open the second volume. Today seems like it might actually go longer than the other ones. I apologise if it does. But yeah, we're, we're going to keep pushing on. I'm enjoying this game. Uh, Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making a note of the subtle repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual, and it's time to share poems again. Right, here we go. I'm kind of worried about Natsuki's, so I think we'll go for that one first, but yeah. I guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep. Even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know. <laughs> Told you. Yeah, yeah. I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. Right, yeah, we're going to start with Natsuki's because hers seem to be a little odd. Like, the, the last one was the one about the raccoons. And it felt a bit weird, that one. Like, it seemed like a massive metaphor for something. I'm not sure what, but it just felt a bit off. Oh, no, it's Natsuki's we're going with first. It was C... It's Yori's. Yori's is the weird one. For God's sake, Ryan, get their names right. Let's see, let's see. You're certainly enthusiastic today. Of course. You know I like your rating. I'm just surprised. It seemed like you had a lot of trouble admitting that before. Well, well, of course. I just had to put in your, put you in your place a little bit. It's not like, I mean, it's not like I was shy or anything stupid like that. Defensive. <laughs> or jealous. I really wasn't jealous. Just because you happen to be a good writer? That's such a dumb thing to get jealous about. <laughs> Natsuki? What? You're not very confident about your writing, are you? Eh, what are you talking about? My writing is obviously the best, right? It took me a while to figure out, but I think I finally did. Maybe Natsuki acts so arrogant because she's trying to make up for her own insecurities. You're judging! Calm yourself! If she acts this... If she acts like the best, then other people might think that way too. Right. Brian? Please just tell me you like my poems. I don't really care if you hate them. Just please tell me I'm the best. I just... I just really need to hear that from someone. I know it sounds stupid. But there's a reason I've never shared my poems like this before. Uh, Natsuki? Because... Because no one ever takes me seriously. What's the point in sharing my poems if people are just going to laugh and say That's so cute, just like you, Natsuki. Ah, she wants to be taken seriously and not being seen as the, the cute girl and all that. Fair enough, fair enough. Sometimes I don't want to be cute. No one understands that. I try really hard when I write. The style doesn't matter. The emotions are there. Why can't anyone see that? I just want... Natsuki trails off. Maybe it's because her lips start to quiver. I look down. Her fists are clenched really tightly. Hey Natsuki, if you're not careful, you'll rip my po uh, you'll rip your own poem. I gently grab the poem with my hand until she relaxes her grip on it. I place it flat on the desk and smooth out the wrinkles that she put into it. D don't read it. Before I can back it up, Natsuki snatches the poem from the desk. It's not any good. I know you hate my poems, so you don't have to read this one, okay? But I want to read it. Well, why? Because I like your poems. I really do. Uh, why would I judge you for your style? 
It's not like my own style is anything crazy. I mean, it's true that the first poem I read... That the first time I read one of your poems, I didn't look too much into it. But I know better now. And it's wrong for Yori to think your style is more amateur than hers. And Siori, she always means well, but sometimes she's so focused on simple happiness that she doesn't understand what people really want. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about how hard it is for you. I'm sure if I was part and I'm sure I was if I was part of that problem, I understand now. You're not just cute, you're a lot more than that. Ah, uh, Natsuki, you're doing it again. Once again, Natsuki clutches her poem a little too hard. She looks down, hiding her eyes from me. I never realised how difficult this was for her. But finally, she forces herself to extend her arms and set the poem on the table. E you can read it. Just turn that way. I don't want you to look at my face right now. Okay, I will. So I'm guessing I'm turning off. I'll be your beach. <laughs> Lovely. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. Uh, a shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap up in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury our heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free on my windy sail and remember the reasons you're wonderful. Oh. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in the way you thought you would in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn how to love yourself again. That one's awesome! Uh, like that was that was actually lovely that poem. Uh, yeah, I felt like I kept writing about negatives, about negative things. So I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kinda hard to write anything negative about the beach. So you decided to write about the beach first, then came up with the message later. Yeah, well. It's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realised we kind of wrote about the same thing, she wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it or whatever. Uh, you can really see her doing that too. Making us write about a simple topic and then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. So hers is going to be about beaches as well. Okay, fair enough. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At least, at the very least, it was good practice. Right, so now we want to go with Yori's. Yori's was the one that was a bit odd. Right, here we go. I see. Oh, mixing up, hold on. I think you're improving your writing in general, Brian. But I can't help but feel a little bit foolish. Eh? For what? Just... I feel like I kept trying to offer advice, when it should have been clear to me that you prefer a different writing style. I probably sounded arrogant. It doesn't help when I'm giving you this voice. I'm so stupid. Yuri, that's a little... No. You don't understand. I spent so much time worrying about wh what's better and what's worse. Not just with you. With Natsuki. With the Sayori. It's obvious now why no one has fun when talking to me. And because of that, 
I'll just keep my mouth shut about your poem. And she's a bit edgy. Well, uh, on the on edge. That's the one. She's a bit on edge. Yori buries her head into her arms on a desk. It's not the first time I've seen her do that. I don't think it's ever as bad as you make it sound in your head. I think if people really didn't like talking to you, then it would be a lot more obvious. I know that you like to read deeply into things, but sometimes things are just worth taking at face value. I just... I've gotten so used to it that's, that it's hard for me to, com to comprehend any other possibility. Gotten used to what? Reading deeply into things? Being disliked? Yuri. What, what am I saying? I'm sorry. I never meant to bring this up. Yuri turns away from me. You should go. Eh? Please. Please don't look at me right now. I want to do some thinking. Are you sure? Yuri nods. Alright. I'll leave Yuri be. Comforting or reassuring her is nearly impossible as it is. So, when she wants to be left alone, I think anything I say could only make things worse. I feel bad, but thankfully she doesn't take it out on me. I'll wait until she feels a little bit better. Right, so I'm not reading one from Yuri, apparently. Maybe I went a bit too much, like, thinking into it. Maybe she's just really upset about so much, so much going on in her home life. I don't know, this game feels like it might be starting to get a bit deep. Let's go with Monica, the freaky one. Like, she is the freaky one. Hi, Brian. Have you thought about what you, you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. They're great! Uh, it would it would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding out of my hands. That's pretty good. You've been spending some time with Natsuki, haven't you? You must like her writing style. Uh, yeah. I think it's a neat way to tell a story. Hmm, I don't disagree. Natsuki's poems may be cute, but they're also very meaningful. I can see why you'd be into that style. I guess that means you're not as much of a fan of Yuri's poems then. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I kind of like everyone's poems. That's true, but I'm sure you like some more than others, right? Like Yuri's use of complex words and symbolism, or Siori's way of expressing happiness or sadness in a more direct way, or must have some kind of preference. You must have some kind of preference, don't you? Uh, not that it's co that it's a contest or anything. I was just curious, that's all. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. Uh, the lady who knows everything. An old lady tells a tale. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. Here I am, a feather. Lost adrift the sky victim of the currents of current wind of the wind day after day i search i search with little hope knowing legends don't exist but when all else has failed me when all others have turned away the legend is all that remains the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky until one day the wind ceases to blow i fall and I fall and fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill expressionless. But a hand catches me between a thumb and a forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer of all which amounts to nothing. 
There is no meaning. There is no purpose. Where was I? There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat. And I pick up a gust of wind. I don't really know what to make of that one. It started out really nice and then it ended kind of sad. I mean, it doesn't seem like there's anything weird behind it or anything like meaning behind it. But it, it, it seems like it's kind of sad but kind of happy at the same time. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that I get, that give life meaning. Not to get all philosophical or anything, but I was kind of, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really, really put that much thought into it. In a way, it's almost, in a way, it's almost paradoxical, because if we all had, if we had all of the answers. Wouldn't the world just start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Uh, are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we, we really wouldn't have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. She's doing it again. I don't like it. I don't like it. Anyway, here's Monica's random tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your poem because you're afraid that it's not good? It can be really disheartening, disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something that you put so much effort into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Fair enough. It... There was the one that one moment where it seemed self-aware, but she didn't actually seem too bad this time. So yeah. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can tell you like. Uh, come on, I can tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably not sicky. Eh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant though. But that's okay. You're making new friends. Just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Brian. Sayori? Is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. Hehe. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. Oh well. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go and play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay. I'm go I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Alright, now I kind of see it. There's there's definitely some up where uh, Sayori. I'm not sure what. I don't know. Is, is, it, is it less about this game being scary and more about emotional stuff? I think that's the best way I can say it, emotional stuff. I guess we'll have to continue to find out. Okay, you three. We're almost up. We're almost we're all done sharing our poems, right? Why don't we start to figure out Hold on a second. 
Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. Uh, that's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood in here so weird today? Look, even Yuri is, isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Oh! Oh! Are we about to get summit? Are we about to get summit? Please tell me summit's about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helped lighten the mood a little, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to her, anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Ah, uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me all t all day. Yeah, so I didn't want to force it. Yeah, if you force it too much, you can just make them feel worse. Ooh. Uh, that curious expression from Yori of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier. Everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Whoa! You're just avoiding my question, bitch. I want my question answered. What did she say? Am I going to get to that? Nope, it's just it's skipping over it by the looks of it. Let's decide what everyone's going to be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm going to be doing this weekend. That's right, Natsuki's going to be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them, different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. As for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling the poetry pamphlets. Siori will be helping me design them. As for Yuri, Yuri, you can, um, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I. I'm useless. No, no, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. That <laughs> Natsuki just like, nah, fuck, what the fuck are you chatting on? N now, Natsuki's pouting too? Jeez, even I could tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I could tell things are going to be even harder when she's not around. Uh, may that may be the case. If... But if I can't be, but if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have the most beautiful handwriting, you know. You should make some banners and decorations and help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that, I, I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes. Uh, as she stirs at her desk in focus and starts nodding. She went full of like, yeah! To the max, full power! Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Brian. The one of us who is truly useless. Uh, don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a helping hand. Or you could always help me as well. I would... I would really be really appreciative of that. Ah, uh, that's... Is, is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. Lovely. So she's giving me this fucking slacker work. 
it's not like Monica's gonna going to give me a choice and you shouldn't be sitting on your own butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle all of the baking on your own. Brian, Brian may not like to be around you if you make him out to be a nuisance, so therefore he may be more suited to assist me with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Brian to... Wh what are you saying? It would be extremely meticulous work. Meticulous. I, yeah, I stumbled on it. Uh, <laughs> and bacon isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, it's up to Brian to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't got... He, he hasn't really gotten to spend any time with me yet, you know. So I'm sure he's interested in... You, you literally just said, I'm surprised at that as well. So, sorry, sorry. As I was saying, though... Jeez, can we just settle this already? Yeah. Brian, are you okay with this? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Right, so, oh, I'm being given an option of all of them. Uh, right, we're not going with Monica. She freaks me the fuck out. Uh, the others, it seems like they're going through problems. Sayori really is going through some shit right now. So I think I'll be spending some time with Sayori. I mean... I mean, if it's going to be with anyone, I prefer to help Siori. I mean, we're already neighbours, and... But, Man but Monica said... Monica said that Siori was helping her. Jeez. You really hate us so... Hate us that much? Uh, no. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be so difficult. Oh, now I've only got the choice of the three. I'm not allowed to go with Siori, apparently. Uh... Let's go with Natsuki. Let's spend a bit of time with Natsuki. Well, baking sounds like it could be fun. And you guys made it sound like a lot of work, so it could probably use two people. Don't worry, baking's a ton of fun. And you'll definitely agree. Eh, uh, just a minute, weren't you saying that? That, that's because... Never mind, okay? Well, anyway, you'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. I'm used to it after all. That's good. Even though Yori is being melodramatic, it's a little hard not to feel bad. So, so that's everyone, right? Anything else we need to talk about? Uh, no, I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Yes! Everything except for the performance is going to be awesome. I don't think that really counts. What about you, Ran? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it all turns out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's so sulking. She's actually sulking. Natsuki starts pouting too. It's not... I mean, it's not a big of a deal or anything. Well, it might not be just that. I think that Yori might be feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do and then no one offering to help. Oh great. We've made we've we've made Yori feel like shit after she already felt like shit. Lovely. That doesn't mean uh Natsuki glances back and forth between everyone with a worried expression. Look, Natsuki goes over and puts her hands on Yori's shoulders. Yuri you really are the most talented one here, and you're really going to help make the event, the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too, but you're going to make the atmosphere special. And that, that'll be really important for the way that people feel during the performance. So, you need to stop being dumb and give yourself a little more credit. Natsuki releases her hands and turns to face the other direction. You didn't really mean that, did you? Um, n not really, but 
Yuri is the only isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken back by Natsuki's words. Natsuki, of all people, to be saying such encouraging things, I began to understand. Natsuki was trying to sound a little like Siori. And even if it didn't work perfectly, I could tell that she tried to say something that Siori would say at a time like this. Because Siori always helped everyone smile and feel good about themselves. Whew. I think I need to start distancing my light. Like, my light's proper close to me and it's making me overheat. So I'm hoping this day ends soon. Uh, I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm going to do my best. And all of us are going to make a really good, great event. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's one more thing. There's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us all to head out. Okay, but I'm staying here a bit longer. I barely got any reading today anyway, so that's fair enough. There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Yuri out the door as they chat between each other. Um, where are you going? Eh? We still need to figure out our plans for this weekend. You literally wouldn't would have got home and realized that you didn't even have a way to, to contact me. Oh, that, well that's true. I have no idea how that slipped my mind. Jeez, good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, okay? You better not make it weird or anything. Why would I do that? <laughs> Natsuki gives me a number. Okay. I'm coming over this Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. Wait, you're coming to my house? Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean, I just figured that since I'm the one helping out, I'd be going to your house. Yeah, right. Like, I could have a guy over at my house. My dad would kill me. Really? That's kind of strict if you ask me. Yeah, how do you think I feel? I can't do anything when my dad's home. Anyway, I just needed to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all I needed from you. I guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. Alright, fine by me. Yeah. I'm really going to show you why I love bacon so much. So you better look forward to it. Oh? Didn't you say you were just coming to give me the dirty work? Well, I was just saying that. It's not like I could act like in front of everyone that I was going to look forward to this. Wait, really? Oh, kind of. Just because I never got to bake with someone else before. That's that's all it is, so... Alright, I get it. Sorry for overreacting. Anyways, I'll be heading now. So yeah, she's got the little crush thing. See you on Sunday. Ah, uh, never mind. I can't believe this. Natsuki's going to be coming over to my house on Sunday. Even though I thought... Even though I would have preferred to go... To do this with Sayori, my anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Maybe you do. Maybe he loves her. Maybe that's what it is. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. It's already Sunday. Oh, we're moving on. Right. Uh, save. We'll save it here. And I will end this episode. Uh, yeah, it seems like there's a lot kicking off. Uh... It doesn't seem like it's the scary stuff though. It just feels like everything's all emotional. So I feel like it's going to deal with real issues rather than dealing with scary stuff. Although, there is the stuff with Monica where she seems like she's self-aware. It seems like, I don't know, she might know that she's in a game and it does worry me a little bit. But yeah, we'll pick up from here on the next episode. I'm loving this game. Uh, 
so yeah, I can't wait to see where it all leads up to. Uh, and I hope you guys are enjoying it too. If you are enjoying it, give it a like and comment down below to let me know what you actually think of the game. Uh, again, like I always say, don't spoil the game, don't like reveal any details that are yet to come because I genuinely want to embrace it. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you can always stay up to date on my content. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one.